Fall is here. And we're going to talk about the fall transition today. We've been getting beat up by the sun. The bass been getting beat up by the heat. They're running out of oxygen in the water. And summer had just has been brutal all around the country. So with the fall transition coming in, that gets us fishermen and bank anglers excited. We're able to locate the bass again. We're able to catch the bass again. Bass will start to cruise up shallow. It will start to school. It will start to feed on bait fish continuously all throughout the rest of the year. And it's up to us to be able to find, to be able to locate, and to be able to catch these bass. The fall transition can be a bit tricky at times. And us anglers, we usually do a lot of what we call junk fishing. We're throwing this bait, that bait. We're throwing about a million different baits, a million different techniques just to be able to find and hone in on a few bass. But today, I'm here to help you limit that and to tell you some of the three baits that you need. So Vince, when do fall even begins? In some parts of the country, it is hot literally almost all year long, 24 seven, each and every day of the week. Well, one key thing I can tell you to look for, once those mornings start to get a bit cooler, start to get a little breeze to come through in the morning and you just step outside, you feel like it's a little nip, a little nippy than it was yesterday. That's the perfect sign that fall transition is coming. And pay attention to your weather reports. I always check the weekly forecast. Once those nights start to cool off, once those nights start to cool off just about a good three to four degrees, maybe five degrees, once they start to cool off consistently over the course of a few days, you have fall transition. Light is getting shorter. The days are getting shorter. And some of the bass fishing can really heat up once you get out there at the right time and catch them when they're really feeding in that fall transition. So me, BLV, is here to help you guys decipher what to throw how to locate and just how to catch these bass. I'm trying to limit your bait options to ensure you have a great productive day on the water. Let's not talk your ear off today. I'm going to show you my three top favorite baits to be able to locate and find bass. Let's get to it. The first bait you must start off with is some sort of surge bait. It is crucial, it is critical, and you must cover water because bass are going to continuously roam all throughout the fall and all throughout the winter months. And sometimes they can really school up and they can really get to busting up on bait fish and you don't want to miss it. So you want to be able to cover a lot of water to be able to run into those fish. Once you find those fish, then you can slow down on it and start to really break down that area and start to bring out a few other techniques. Then you can start to throw like drop shot, shaky heads, maybe test is really just something on the bottom to really ensure you're not missing any fish once you locate them. You want to break down that area thoroughly. You just want to be able to catch and maximize your potential. First base, I'm going to throw, if you have a lot of grass, you really just can't beat a swim jig. As you can see, I have a blue gill color. also have a shad pattern color. You just can't go wrong with these selections. Bass really tend to key in on a lot of shad pattern throughout the fall and the winter. So whenever they don't want the bluegill, bluegill usually reigns supreme in any pond situation. There are bluegill literally all across the country in every single body of water. But if you have shad in the area, be sure to pick up that shad colored swim jig because bass are going to feed in on some of those smaller ones. Ensure that you trim those skirts, give it a bit more of a finesse profile, and I can guarantee you can be able to catch them in grass around structure. There are many search baits that you can work with. You can work with the swim jig, you can work with crank baits, you can work with spinner baits, you can work with swim baits. Literally, the category is open for you guys. You just got to figure out what the bass want on your lake. If I don't have a lot of a lot of grass and I may have some structure or some rocks, throw that square bill. Man, you can really crank this thing down. You can run it on a stop and go retrieve, or you can just bounce it off a structure, really make this bill deflect and trigger a reaction strike. And as you can see, bait choice selection very simple a little silver silver is bait fish that right there get the job done all year long and if you just so happen to you really have to match that hat you can go with a smaller crank bait as you can see the mini crush compared to the regular crush 50 just to really downsize and be able to key in on some of those finicky bass that won't eat so you can bounce these things off a of structure lay downs rocks anything you can find in your lake if you have it and these would be a key factor i promise you on just some days when the water is super murky, the water is stained, and the bass cannot track down your lure and throw out that spinning bait. I really love to throw these on cloudy days or days when there's just a little current on the water, a little wind. Those blades get to kick and the skirt getting to moving, and it looks like a ball of bait fish itself once the sun hits off it. And you can get away with these in a lot of dirty water situations, and if it's great along grass lines as well. And you can even bounce them out structure from time to time. But spinning baits, swim jigs, crank baits. And like I also mentioned, 
the swim bait. You can't be the good natural swim bait. We're throwing a what the 3.2 inch 6 6 divine swim bait paired with a 316 ounce 6 inch swim bait jig head. And just a natural bait fish looking color. Just to be able to fool some of those bass and get that sort of presentation with a tail kicking. And if you have very murky stained water, switch over to something with a little chartreuse. You got a little blue on the back just to kind of give it a bait fish profile. But you throw that chartreuse, that bright green, if you really want to stand out from like thousands of bait fish or if you just need it for that murky water situation. So just kind of alternate between your colors, throwing like a natural shot, something that's a bit less natural to get a lot of visibility. Also for that swim bait, if you really want to help and be able to stand out, throw you an underspin. This one has a gold blade, which is meant for more flash. But if you're trying to mimic those shad, be sure to use that silver blade. I don't have one with me right now, but an underspin will add more vibration and it adds more flash to your bait so you can be able to stand up from those hundreds if not thousands of schools of bait fish and they help you get more bites but if you have too much grass just stick with a regular swim bait jig head swim bait is definitely one of your sort of baits that work when the bass won't hit anything else so now we talked about moving baits let's talk about the next bait category the next bait you should be throwing other than a surge bait once you find those bass once you lock in on them you're able to break down the area a bit more now we can slow down and we can throw jerk baits you can throw a hard body jerk bait or you can throw a soft plastic jerk bait i prefer the soft plastic because they're weedless and of course they just sink super slow and they look very very natural but if you have ultra clear water you can get away with these as well or you can throw the hard body and get a lot of flash on that jerk bait and as you can see my three main color selections got a natural green with a little translucent body watermelon gill there and also have the bluegill magic which is more of a darker color for that stained water situation. And I also have something natural. You never can be anything natural, just a little shad pattern flush. All of these are the flush from six cents fishing. Great swim baits, very durable. And they even have like a hook keeper at the top. So you can really lock that hook in there without it being exposed. And it can really lead you to a lot of success and help you come through a lot of that grass very easily. What makes these baits so great, they can be fished subsurface, they can be fished on the surface. If you're working fast enough, you can really twitch it and really make this thing dart left to right. You can walk the dog with it and you can really trigger some of those aggressive bass to strike. But when they aren't super aggressive, you can just pop, pop, pause, fish it like an actual jerk bait, flip that thing spiral on down. And as it's slowly sinking, a lot of times you're going to get smacked on the pause. So it can be fished top water, subsurface mid depth they can even be fishing on the bottom if you really want them on the bottom you can throw in a small little tiny nail weight in the back of that tail or you can put it more closer towards the head so it can dive down the nose first and it really look like a natural bait fish coming through the water so you got to have some versatility that's why i love the salt plastics they can be fished from top to bottom they're weedless and they're very natural so very great choice when you're going with a soft plastic jerk bait like the flush. Last but not least, one other bait category you must have on deck is a top water. This is something else that's great at mimicking bait fish and you can be fish like a wounded bait fish really triggers some of those reaction strikes. You have like a two and a half inch popper, not too big, very small, which bass tend to key in on during this time of the year. They really love those smaller bait fish. And of course, we have a natural white shad pattern. This thing reflects great when the sun is hitting, and it really gives it a bit of shine, a bit of flash, and you're working it across the top of the water. And of course, you can't go wrong with a bluegill imitating bait. It just reigns supreme all across the country. They're literally in every single body of water around. So if you don't have shad, you only have bluegill, be sure to stick with bluegill. One of my favorites. I even throw it even when there is shad in the water because bass just feed on bluegill all year long. And of course, if we really need to stand out in that murky water, then we go with the black magic. I'm not sure if that's the exact name, but I know there's some kind of magic about this black and blue looking bait. It's a very small popper. And the reason I love these, like I said, they're small, they're two and a half inches, fit the bait fish forwards perfectly. And they had a teaser tail on the back, super sharp hooks. And you can even walk the dog with these things. You can twitch your view. If you twitch your rod just right, you can really make this thing spit up water. They're made to pop and spit up water across the surface, but you can really walk them from left to right and really entice those bites to stay in the strike zone longer. And you don't want it just a straight pop and retrieve. And these baits are going to 100% get you bit. I love these in open water. Be sure to target nets to structure, not directly in structure with trouble hooks, but target nets to structure. 
target open water where you think schools of bait fish are, you can really trigger some reaction strikes. This is another great bait that works all year long, the frog. You don't have open water, you fish a lot of grass, fish a lot of pads like us in the south, especially me on this channel, you see it all the time. Be sure to pick that frog up. Any type of top water to get it done. But I really do love the popper to match that bait fish profile. But like I said, if you can't get away with the popper, you need something along the grass lines, throw that frog. Just throw you a white color. The main color that matters about a frog, a lot of people don't tell you this, that bottom color, which is white. That's going to mimic shad and bait fish. And even the tails are white. And once that sun hits it, nothing can beat this thing in the water. You need something a bit darker. Got a little green and black on there and green and black tails, you can really get this thing to stand out in murky, dirty water. And coming across those pads, they are made to spit up water. As you can see, they are popping frogs, but just like my other baits, one thing I love about Six Cents products, they're all versatile. So you don't just have to fish this on a straight retrieve, popping and spitting up water. You can really walk the dog with this thing and really get that tail to start dancing, get that thing moving from left to right and then Tyson's bites. Bass just, they are just tantalized by that side to side action. They feel like you're mocking them or you kind of talking junk in their face and they just come up out of nowhere and just smack it. You will get some of the biggest, most crucial key blow ups that you ever seen in your life. If you try walking the dog with top waters. And we still haven't talked about how to locate bass. Bass will be following bait fish all throughout the fall. And as they're following bait fish, no day is going to ever be the same. You may catch them on one spot on the lake one day. The next day you come out trying the same spot, it might be completely abandoned. And that all has to do with the bait fish movement. The bass are going to follow them literally everywhere from open water to ledges and humps to structure to the back of coals. They're just following them wherever they are. So it's your job to get you a good pair of polarized glasses and just look across the surface of the water. Even if you can't see directly in the water, look across the surface of the water. You can kind of see the little rings, little ripples, little bait fish flipping. That's what you want to throw at. Bass patterns, as the fall come in, they're leaving those summer patterns behind. So the bass that were deep, they are slowly moving from the deep end all the way to the shallow end. They're going to work their way backwards. If you know about how the spun works, how the bass are super shallow, then they kind of move out a little further and further and further until they're super deep. Bass are going to inch their way back up shallow as the fall continues and as the temperatures continue to drop. They're going to move from those open water spots to secondary key points. Or if you have like a cove or a river mouth, they're going to move from that deep water to like the mouth of that river or the mouth of that cove. And as the temperatures continue to drop, they're just going to move closer, closer, more shallower. And they're going to basically come right back to the same spawning grounds where they left earlier throughout the year. And they're just going to have a slow way of creeping back up from secondary points to actual points all the way up in the back of the coves or the back of pockets. So they're going to move from deep to shallow, long story short. And it would be very easy to find these fish, look for the bait, be sure to keep your eyes open for depth changes. Be sure to keep your eyes open for structure. Anything that the bass may relate to in the springtime. Just think about spring fishing. Whatever you were catching them at shallow or when they were just a few feet off the bank, they're going to make their way to those secondary and those primary home locations up in the shallow water all over again. And remember, the biggest bass in your lake is going to take the best structure and the best cover available. So be sure to pick out those spots every single chance you get a day to go out. The fall transition can be tricky at times, but this is the time to break a PB. I promise you, a lot of guys are going hunting. Less pressure on the water. That's where you come in at. You just bang. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Please also let me know what is your favorite bait to catch them on this time of the year. What are you throwing this time of the year? There are plenty of more baits to choose from, but I try to narrow it down to three simple bait categories. You want you something to search the water and be able to locate fish. You need to do something to slow down to be able to dial in on the bass and some sort of top water. It just works all year long and the bass can't get a great look at it from up underneath, but it can create some of the most vicious, violent reaction strikes. With that being said, you guys keep those lines tight and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. I'm out.